My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. Here's what happened. I did this whole face using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. Other than my priming products, the only thing that I put on my face before I went in with Modern Renaissance was a little bit of clear brow gel to hold my brows in place. That is it. Obviously, this is deeply in the spirit of the no buy year. I don't remember when or why I got the idea to do this, and you know what? I just realized that I didn't search YouTube for full face using Modern Renaissance to see if anyone else has done it. So it's highly possible that I'm not the first person to make this video, but I did think of it on my own. I think I was just messing around during makeup playtime one night before bed and I was using this palette, because so I've been shopping my stash for it, and I just went ham. Before we get started, I just wanna say thank you so much for all of your well wishes when I passed 1,000 subscribers. It was really exciting. And thank you so much for all of your feedback when I asked about whether or not I should do a giveaway. The prevailing sentiment seems to be that people don't have bad feelings about giveaways, but that I shouldn't put it in the title, and that I should do something that's kind of aligned with my value system and what I enjoy and what I want to give away, and that it should definitely be for my subscribers who are actually engaged on the channel. I'm going to figure out a way to randomly select a handful of comments from my past handful of videos. So I'll probably pick something like five or six winners. And the way I'll pick them is that I'll just randomly pick comments on the videos. And I think I can probably find a computer program to do that. Like I'll run the comments through some kind of random selector. In any case, I'll figure out a way to do it randomly. I'm not gonna be hand picking comments. I'm gonna just do the digital equivalent of closing my eyes and pointing. If I pick your comment, I'll comment on your comment and I'll say, congratulations, you're a giveaway winner. And I will ask you to email me with some piece of information that you can then re-comment on my comment, just so I can verify that the people emailing me are the people whose comments I selected, if that makes sense. Anyway, the instructions will be very clear in the comment that I put on your comment if you win the giveaway. And then I'll just send you something. I think it'll probably be books. I think I'll probably pick some of the books that I've mentioned here on my channel that I've really been loving over the past six months and I'm just gonna send you each a book. This is partly in the spirit of the resistance to the desperate acquisition of makeup because some of you are saying in your comments about the giveaway that some of us aren't just trying to spend less, we're also trying to acquire less product, less stuff. In the future I might be giving away stuff, but for now I feel really happy with the decision to give away some books. It's an experiment, again you all know that I'm striking out into the wild with this entire channel. I've never done any of these things before. It was my first time trying to negotiate the logistics of a giveaway. So if it doesn't all go perfectly smoothly, please forgive me. But I think that we will figure out a way to make it work. So check your notifications. I try to comment on every comment. I think so far I'm still doing a pretty good job of commenting on every comment. But check the comments that I'm commenting on your comment. Just in case I've commented, congratulations, you're a winner, baby. Thank you so much for your input on the question of giveaways. And I also really appreciate all of the sweet, sweet things that you have been commenting on my videos over the past week or so. It's a little bit weird and actually scary to have a channel grow. As centered as I try to stay and as and as joyful as I am about my projects and as much as I embrace dynamics and change and excitement in my life, there, there can't help but be a little bit of anxiety creeping in because you just don't know how these kinds of things are going to feel <laughs> until they start to happen. And, and this is a really weird world that we're living in with YouTube and social media and subscribers and viewers and, and everything. It's, it's, it's wonderful, but it's weird. So. Your support means the world to me, it really does. It helps to ameliorate that anxiety and then it really helps to keep me going, so thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get in to the meat of the video. Oh. 
All I have on my face to start is Urban Decay's Optical Illusion Complexion Primer, a little bit of color corrector. I use the Tent Doll Ultra Wear, the green color corrector from Lancome, and I have a little bit of clear brow gel in my brows. My lips are feeling kind of dry, so I'm going to pop some of this Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask on them to keep them nice and comfortable while I'm working. I'm going to prime my eyes with Urban Decay Primer Potion, the anti-aging one. Now I'm going to go right in with Tempera to set the lid. This big fluffy brush is from Wet n Wild. I think I want to keep the eyes somewhat on the neutral side of things because I know that I'm going to be going really red and orange with my cheeks and lips for this look. I'm going to start with Warm Taupe and I'm using the same fluffy brush. So I'm going to try, even though I have this big brush, to kind of concentrate this color on the outer half of my lid. I have pretty hooded eyes, so you can see that I've brought that pretty dark crease color. I made it pretty dark by layering it over top of itself a couple times, and I've brought it really, really, really high up, almost all the way up to my eyebrows, in an attempt to deepen my meager eye sockets. I'm going to take a much smaller and denser brush, and I'm actually going to take Warm Taupe again and layer it again, but this time more into my outer V and kind of try to deepen up that look while still keeping it monochromatic. This is the ColourPop E9, by the way. So you can see that even though it's the same color, I was able to create some dimension there just by using a different brush, a denser brush, and by packing it on a little bit more densely into those areas. Now I'm going to try to get even more dimension on my eyes by going in with Cypress Umber, this brown. I'm going to use the same brush, but I'm not going to blend it up and out as much as I did with the second layer of Warm Taupe. So I'm really just packing it right in my outer V. And I'm just going to soften the edges of that with this little wet and wild brush. Ordinarily I would take an eyeliner and pack it into my lash line both above and underneath my lashes. But because I'm only using the Modern Renaissance palette for this look, I'm going to take this little brush, it's the Morphe E43, and I'm going to pack more Cypress Umber even more densely into my lash line and tight line. Then I'm going to pop a little bit of that same dark shadow onto my lower lash line and smoke it out with a bit of warm taupe, but I'm going to try to keep it on the outer half and maybe even the outer third of my eye. This is a little pencil brush and it's clean. I'm going to use that to smoke it out. I'm going to stick with that very simple two shadow look for the eyes, although I might bring some shadow from my cheeks into my eyes later, we'll see how it goes. But first, I brushed off a little bit of fallout and it kind of made the inside part of my cheeks ruddy because I was rubbing at them. So I'm going to dab just a tiny bit more of color corrector on there to try to balance out that redness a little bit. I'm just using the most unimaginably tiny little droplet, and once it's sheared out, the color becomes almost imperceptible, if not imperceptible, and I find that once it kind of settles and melts into my skin, really you don't see any green at all, it just looks less red. So the tone of my skin looks more evened out, less red, but I still have a couple of little dots here and there, healing blemishes, 
very stubborn scars and I'm going to try and see if I can use the pale shade eyeshadow tempera that's in this palette to cover up those spots and just make them blend in more with my skin tone. If it doesn't work out, this this whole thing is an experiment. If it doesn't work out, I may go in with some concealer at the end, but let's just see. It, it does look pretty close to my skin tone and I know this look isn't gonna be perfect. So a little dot right there. Some fallout down here on my chin. How'd you get all the way down there, guys? It's 100% working. I'm actually using it to um, neutralize some pretty big areas of redness, like here on my chin. Yeah, it's absolutely working like a nice powder, basically. I think I'm even gonna put it on the middle of my nose. Wow. Wow, that really worked. It, it looks like I just used some kind of light, lightweight powder concealer, but it absolutely did what I needed it to do. I think I'm gonna go into my brows before I do the rest of my face, just in case there's some fallout from the dark shadow. Taking this Bobbi Brown Eye Definer, it's an angle brush, and I'm going in with, you guessed it, Cypress Umber, the dark brown. And I already have a bit of clear brow gel dried into my brows, so it's kind of giving the powder something to cling to. All right, time for the fun part. I am going to take this little wet and wild, I don't know what this is, it's like a nice little nubbin of a face brush. And I'm going to dip into burnt orange right here. It is going on beautifully. It is going on like a beautiful high-end blush. And it's really buffing out, like it's holding its pigment, but it's not sticking down. It's buffing out to actually quite a natural flush. I'm going to take this very loose, fluffy brush that I usually use for highlight, and I'm going to take just the teeniest bit of that same color, burnt orange, and blend it into my eyeshadow to connect my eyeshadow to my blush. This is kind of softening the edge of that eyeshadow, but in a way that also makes the look more cohesive. I'm really glad I did that. I feel like it wasn't really working for me before and now it's really working for me. So I'm taking this same blush brush and I'm going to dip into Real Gar, the love of my life. I'm gonna pop that right on the upper outer part of my cheekbones and blend it out. So that was a much deeper color and it's turned from a natural flush into a much more painterly and slightly editorial look. I'm gonna go back into Burnt Orange and just put the teeniest bit on the tip of my nose. Well, I thought it was the teeniest bit. <laughs> this is a clean brush. One of the things that's interesting about this is that I don't have any base on, right? And my skin was looking kind of mottled before, but now that I have this really dramatic blush on, the parts of my face that don't have color product on them look to me brighter and more even in tone because of the contrast with those dark cheeks. And that's one thing that I find is a really useful tip for the summertime when you wanna wear less base or no base at all. A strong cheek can make it look like your skin 
the part of your face that isn't your cheek is in better shape than it actually is. So those have all been matte products so far, and I'm going to go in with the two shimmers in the palette and do some highlighting. I'm going to start with Primavera and put a little more work into my eyes. So that's Primavera on the inner half of the lid. I'm blending it out with this little brush. I think that this is a Real Techniques brush. I'm gonna take this same little brush that I used for concealing and I'm gonna go into Vermeer, which is the more cool toned of these two shimmers. I like Primavera way better than Vermeer as a rule with this palette. I just think that Primavera performs better. It's richer, it's more shimmery, but Vermeer, that light bright color, it's more of a highlighting color because it's a lighter color, so it just brings more light to where it, it's placed. So I find myself sometimes frustrated with this palette when I want to reach into Vermeer for the color, but I wish that it performed like Primavera basically. So I'm gonna pack this just in the very very inner corner. And then I'm actually gonna take this fluffier side of this brush. This is that amazing brush that came with the Urban Decay Electric Palette. I'm gonna take Tempera, the matte shade that I've been using <laughs> to conceal, and I'm gonna kind of blend out from my inner corner down onto my face a little bit to brighten it up in the same way you would use an under eye brightening powder. It's working amazing. Now, I don't wanna put either of these shimmery eyeshadows over top of the blush look that I've created because I think both of them are pretty pigmented and would have the potential to kind of cancel out the blush in a funny way. But I am going to mix some tempera and some vermeer and pop it on other parts of my face that I typically like to highlight. And I'm actually gonna keep using this same fluffy brush. It's performing so well with these shadows. This is mostly Vermeer. I'm gonna use my ABH 23 and use Vermeer um, on my chin. Gosh, I wonder if it really would perform badly over top of that blush because now I see how much it's lighting up the other parts of my face I really wanna put it on. Just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna take a little bit of Vermeer on this brush and just put it right on the high points, just to see. It might make it look worse than it does now, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't like how it's taking away from the blush. But we're, we did it. I feel like it would it would be a nice highlighter. Vermeer would work as a nice highlighter on bare skin or on a lighter blush look, but on top of this dark blush look, I'm gonna buff it out with this. I don't wanna forget to put my mole on. How are we gonna do it? This is Cypress Umber. It doesn't look as good as it does with the eyeliner, but it'll do. All right, lips. I'm gonna take Venetian Red on my finger and scrub it into my lips like a stain and see how it goes. I'm gonna use this same little brush to try to get a little more precision. Okay, we can't pretend that's not a really pretty lip color. 
It's really pretty. Um, wow. I love a soft stain-like lip and I really love a softened lip line. So it was nice to use that little brush to blend the lip line kind of up into where I highlighted my Cupid's bow with the other sh eyeshadow. They blend really well together obviously because <laughs> they're eyeshadows and they're designed to blend. I wiped off the product that I had on my lips, but I'm sure that there was some residue of it that helped the powder to kind of stick. It, it feels staining, it feels very permanent and relatively comfortable, and I'm not going to do an all-day wear test with this, although I should have done. That would be really interesting. But I, my instinct is to say that this would be a pretty long-wearing lip. Yeah, the color and the finish are both killer. Anyway, this is what the look looks like without mascara. If I was stranded somewhere and I only had the Modern Renaissance palette and my brushes, this is what I would be able to do. However, I can't see myself getting stranded somewhere with only the Modern Renaissance palette without mascara, so I'm gonna go ahead and put on some mascara to complete the look. Wow, my under eyes are so bright. My under eyes are living their own lives right now. They are like each applying to a different college. They're getting scholarships. <laughs> but I don't mind it. It is very painterly. The color story I find to be very cohesive and, and powerful in a way, even though I didn't put that much color on my eyes. The palette itself is such a cohesive color story that the way that the eyes, cheeks, and lips all work together, and even the way that the highlight works with those things, to me it's it's like a painting. And I did feel like I was painting my face in a way that I never ever do because I just was dipping into this one palette as if it were a painter's palette. If I were going to an event that required a full face of makeup, I would show up in this look in a heartbeat. There's something quite striking about it. It's like the palette, it's like the shadows as my tool did something to the face, did something to the look that reaching for all of my individual makeup items blush, bronzer, highlight, lipstick from separate brands, from separate collections, doesn't quite do unless I really sit down and plan it very, very carefully and bring all of my knowledge of color theory to bear. I was expecting that it would be interesting to see if I could repurpose the shadows, to see how they perform as blushes and highlighters, but my expectation was kind of one-dimensional. I was thinking, oh, it's my no-buy year, how can I diversify my collection, how can I make my collection seem exciting? I know, I can do it by using products in places for which they weren't intended. So. If anything, I was expecting to find an eyeshadow in here that I really love as a blush and then start reaching for it as a blush. And actually that did happen. Real Gar is pretty intense as a blush. The one that I loved was Burnt Orange. Before I layered on this second color, I thought that was an incredibly beautiful, natural blush look that I will probably create again. But it goes so much further than that. It goes so much further than just having discovered that Venetian Red makes a beautiful lipstick. The other thing that I learned is that a single eyeshadow palette, if used in an unorthodox way, can create an incredibly cohesive and striking color story on the face. I am so eager to do this experiment with some of my other eyeshadow palettes. Do you want to see that or should I just do it in my own time? Let me know. Modern Renaissance was an easy pick. I mean, I had shopped my stash for it this week, that's why I picked it. But it was also easy because it's got so many colors in it that we often use for the cheeks and the lips. Like there's obviously lipstick colors in here, there's obviously blush colors, there's even that color I was able to use as a concealer. What if I were to do a full face using the electric palette, for example? Like, what would I use for the lips? What would I use for the cheeks? And what if I were to use my Marc Jacobs palette and do a full face? Like, what would I use for the lips in here? Maybe one of these rusty, ruddy shades or something like that? It would be totally different color stories, totally different looks, and I would absolutely embrace the idea of turning this into a series if you guys want it. I know that 
demo videos and tutorial videos aren't really the most watched or the most clicked on, but I feel like this one is particularly in the spirit of using what you have and in the spirit of my no buy year. Um, so I would love to make it into a series. Um, let me know what you think. I hope that this has inspired you to go dip into your collection and see if you have any eyeshadows that you would like to try using as blush or lip products or highlight products. And if you have Modern Renaissance, I recommend nothing more highly than putting Venetian Red onto your lips tomorrow or <laughs> the next time you put on makeup. If you do, go to your makeup collection right now and put on some eyeshadows all over your face. Please let me know. I would love to hear what you find out about if you discover anything that works as well as the things that I have discovered. That is it. Thank you so much for watching this silly experimental project video. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember that whatever you have on your plate this week, take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.